So let's understand what is a k-means algorithm. Well, k-means clustering is one of the most simplified and a popular unsupervised machine learning algorithms. By unsupervised machine learning algorithm, I mean to say that we work on an unsupervised data where we have different different parameters, but there is no label present in the data. So we don't know that the data entry that we are given to us belong to this class or to that class. We are completely unknown to the labels we have. So we have only the data entries without the labels and our target is to separate these data entries. Or I can say that our target is to cluster these data points in an n dimensional space based on the differences or based on the inference in them. So let's understand the algorithm. So first of all, we have to choose cluster numbers. That is how many clusters we want to break our data in. Then we select at random K points. That is the centroids in our data. These centroids need not to be the data points. They just need to be in the dimensional space in which we have our data. I'll explain you. Don't worry about that. Then we assign each data point to the closest centroid. Then we calculate the new centroids by calculating the mean of the distance or the average distance in between the centroids. Repeat the step 3 until the centroid is fixed. Right? So let's understand how we perform the k means algorithm. Suppose these are the points given to us and we have to define our data into three classes. So we have three number of cluster centers. Okay, so initially let's choose the centroids. We can choose this point as a centroid. Okay, but let's take an example if we cho if we don't choose the centroid from our data points. So this is our centroid one. Okay, this is our centroid two, and let's say this is our centroid three. Okay, so now we so now what will happen is each data point will calculate the distance from these centroids let's see how so we'll calculate the distance so we can we see that this data point is closest to this centroid this is closest to this this is closest to this closest to this closest to this closest to this so we have this centroid right then this data point is closest to this this is closest to this this is closest to this now this is either closest to this or to this one. Let's say it is closest to this centroid. This is to this one, this is to this one, this one and this is to this one. So we have this centroid and then we have this centroid. This is till step number three, right? So what we have done is we have chosen our centroid. Then we find out the distance. And then we assign the data point to the closest centroid. Now we have to calculate the new centroid. So how will it happen? So we have these three distances, distance one, distance two, distance three. Sorry, this was distance, this was distance one, distance two and distance three. So the distance of each point to the centroid. So we'll sum up this distance. So for cluster one, let's say this is cluster one. This is cluster 2 and this is cluster 3. So for cluster 2, we have a distance of summation of these three distances and then we'll average out this distance. Okay. Then for these data points, we find some distance and we average out. So what we'll do is we'll find the average of the average distance from these data points. Okay, so now what we have is the new centroid for this center for for the cluster number two. We will choose the center point for this cluster. So let's say this is our new center head. This is our new center head. This is our new center head. So the position will change now, right? And now we have to perform since the position is changed, we have to repeat the entire process from step 3 again. So these are the new center heads 
or the new centroids now we again calculate the distance of each point with respect to these centroids and will assign those data points to them now initially this point belong to this center head but now when we calculate the distance it will move towards this it will move towards this this will move towards this this will move towards this right and similarly this data point will come here this data point will come here this will come here and this will come here similarly this will this will so again we have new center new centroid new centroid then we again take the average distance of this now in case of this centroid there is no point added and no point removed so this center head will remain at its position in this case we have a new data point so the center position will change to some place suppose here in this case we have uh, one data point less so here also the center position will change so let it be here now we will again perform the iteration and the data point the center point will get fixed to its position that means we need not to perform any further iterations these centroids are the best suited centroids for our model right so that's how we perform the clustering using a k means algorithm we choose a centroid point randomly and then we calculate the distance of each data point from that centroid and then after choosing the centroid after preparing a cluster we take out the average of that cluster make it a centroid and again calculate the distance of all the uh, centroid all the data points with respect to that centroid suppose initially this point was belonging to cluster 1 now in the next iteration you have to check the distance of this point this point from centroid 1 centroid 2 centroid 3 all the three points and then you assign the data point to the given cluster uh, centroid to which it is being the nearest one right so this is how we cluster our data points in k means clustering suppose we choose initially we have to randomly choose our centroids right so i choose my centroid 1 over here centroid 2 over here and centroid 3 over here so when i will perform the step eventually what will happen is we'll come up with the cluster 1 like this and cluster 2 like this and cluster 3 like this right because all these data points will be closest to this centroid point but initially in the idle case this should be cluster 2 this should be cluster 3 and this entire should be cluster 1 so this is the limitation with k means algorithm that is we have no fixed criteria to randomly choose our centroid points and in that and in that case if we choose or mark a wrong centroid point it's not exactly wrong but if we randomly initialize a centroid point in this fashion then our cluster will be shaped like this and in this case what will happen is initially the inter cluster distance okay sorry intra cluster distance so intra cluster distance means the distance between the clusters so the distance this plus distance this this is intra distance for cluster 1 then this is cluster uh, distance 1 distance 2 distance 3 distance 4 so this combined is intra cluster distance for cluster 2 intra cluster distance for cluster 3 so in this case what will happen the intra cluster distances will increase right but what is the idle case okay so understand one thing one is intra cluster distance and the other is inter cluster distance okay so intra means within cluster okay and inter means between two different clusters okay understand one thing suppose we have these three points and we have this centered over here okay so the distance let's say this is our centroid 
and let's say this is our centroid so the intercluster in this case will be this distance plus this distance so this will be so d1 plus d2 will be d1 plus d2 will be the intra cluster distance for cluster 1 okay let's say this is 2 and this distance will be that is d3 will be for intra cluster 2 and the intra cluster distance will be the distance between these two clusters right so the main target in k means clustering is or in any clustering is that the intra cluster distance should be minimum and the inter cluster distance should be maximum and what is the intuition behind saying so is that if in a centroid we have all the data points closest to the centroid right so if the intra cluster distance in a cluster is very small then that means all the data points are highly correlated or highly similar to each other right and when I am saying that intercluster should be as maximum as possible, then I mean to say that suppose this is this was cluster one, this is cluster two, and this is cluster three. So the distance between these two clusters should be maximum. Then that means that the data points belonging to cluster two and the data points belonging to cluster three are highly different from each other. So the target is to bring the highly co correlated or highly similar data points together and to separate out the highly different data sets from each other. So the minimum intra cluster distance and the maximum inter cluster distance. This what K means focus on. But when we randomly choose the number of centroids and the position of centroid then this, this property or the this motive of algorithm fails so in that case we have one more algorithm which is k means plus plus so you don't need to dive into this algorithm but you just know that there is an advanced version of k mean algorithm that is k mean plus plus which take case of implementing these two things that is minimum intra cluster distance and maximum intra cluster distance it has some algorithm variations in which it can choose the centroid heads in a very efficient manner so this was all about k means algorithm and in the next coming lecture we'll be seeing that how to choose the number of centroids in this example i have said that we are taking three centroids how do you know that i have to take three centroids so for that there is an approach to be determined about the optimal number of cluster points that we require in k-mean algorithm which we will be understanding in the next lecture. What is elbow method? This algorithm is used to find the optimal number of clusters in k-means clustering. As in the previous lectures that I have told you that we have to choose k randomly. So the question is what is the optimal number of centroids that we should have in case of the given data set so to have that conclusion we use this elbow method and we find out the optimal number of clusters uh, optimal number of centroids or optimal number of clusters that we should have with respect to our data set this is an elbow graph and as you keep, as you can see that in this particular graph we have a clear shape in which we are reaching up to this point right so this is in a shape of an elbow so that's why this graph is known as elbow graph and we are very much interested in finding the WCSS values WCSS means within cluster sum of scares which I'll explain you so how the model works so consider this is the data points we are given and we are finding the optimal number of clusters okay suppose initially uh, let's say we have k number of clusters and let their value be 1 2 3 4 5 okay so considering only one centroid point this will this entire data points will come 
into a single cluster if we have k equals to 1. So and let the centroid be somewhere here. So what we'll do is we will calculate the distance of each data point from this centroid. Right. So what we'll do is we'll do summation of distances of point p i with respect to the centroid raised to the power of 2. So we'll what we'll do is we'll do the summation of the distances between uh, we will do the summation of the scares of distances between the centroid and the data point. So that's why this is known as within cluster sum of scares. And now consider if we have two data points. So if we have two data points then suppose this is cluster 1 this is cluster 2. Okay. And now let's say this is the center head and this is the center head. So center head or centroid. So we'll calculate this distance. So it will be the summation of all these distances plus the summation of all these distances data points with respect to the cluster. So PI with respect to C1 and then PI with respect to C2. So this will be the for cluster 1, this will be for cluster 2 and this will be the within cluster sum of scares for cluster center 2. So we will calculate these values WCSS 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? So this is the within cluster sum of scares. Now consider if each data point is a centroid. It is a centroid. Centroid, centroid. So suppose this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have 14 data points and I say that we have 14 centroids. And if I have 14 centroids, that means I have 14 clusters. Right? And when I'll calculate the within cluster sum of scales, in this case, then the value will be 0. Right? So what will happen is when we increase the number of centroids, the within cluster sum of scares keep on decreasing, right? And now this is a very crucial part that we have to focus on. So suppose for within cluster for k equals to 1, this is the number of centroid. For k equals to 1, we have a WCSS value of 60. For k equals to 2, we have a WCS value of 30. Then for 3, let's say it is 18 and for 4 then it's 10. So it's gradually keep on decreasing because when we are reducing the data points and we are increasing the centroids, so in that case the intra cluster distance is decreasing. That's why within cluster sum of scares is decreasing gradually when we are increasing the number of centroids or number of clusters. So as you can see the point will come when each of the data point will be the centroid and will reach up to a zero value of WCSS. The target is to have a minimum WCSS value but we should keep in mind that it is because of the centroids we are choosing not because of the direct correlation of the data point and the centroid. So we come up with the elbow method over here we look over the elbow point so in that case you can see that on increasing the clusters from 1 to 2 the WCSS value is increasing very gradually that means it's a good approach then from 30 it's again reaching to 10 then again 3 is much better then on 4 it's again decreasing that means 4 is also better but after 4 this WCSS value is, is decreasing gradually. So it is decreasing gradually. That means it's not because of the approach. It's because the number of centroids is in direct correlation to the intracluster distance and that's why it's decreasing. So our only target is to focus on the elbow point which is 4 in this case 
so that means this four is the optimal number of clusters that we should have for the given data so what we do is we have a data we find out the WCSS value by considering all the cases from k equals to 1 up to n which is in this case 7 and out of these value we find a elbow point till which the values are not decreasing gradually but because of the formation of clusters and we are only interested in that scenario only so that's why we use elbow method to optimally choose the number of centroids how k-means work and all the maths behind it and in this particular lecture we'll be implementing all those maths with the help of a python code and we'll see how the stuff works so starting with our code i have already imported the basic libraries numpy pandas matplotlib and the cburn library okay now the data i am choosing for this particular lecture is market data so this is our data in this data what we are given is the satisfaction and loyalty points from a customer so customer customer is asked to rate the store out of 10 so the points that the customer will give to the store is the satisfaction point given by that customer <coughs> and then there is a loyalty point which is given to the customer by the store so using all both these points satisfaction point and the loyalty point we are grouping members in different group as per the uh, so as to offer them different schemes okay and the loyalty points that the store has given to the customer is based upon the number of items purchased by them in the last year plus the amount of money spent by them in the store okay so using satisfaction and loyalty scores will be grouping customers and we'll use this grouping to offer them different schemes which will be going in the store okay so that's the data information so we have only 30 entries in this data don't worry about this i have taken such a data so that you can understand the concept very easily okay so that's the data description right and the mean satisfaction point is 6.4 right and now what we'll do is let me just show you how our data will look when i'll plot it okay so for that we'll be using a scatter plot so plt dot scatter then we have to mention our x and y data so x data is data and this satisfaction column right so satisfaction and the y column will be data and this loyalty point right and then we have this is our x and y data okay and now we will mention the labels so x label is the satisfaction right so satisfaction is the x label then we have y label so plt dot y label and that's our loyalty so let's see how our data will look like so that's the data we have it's spread like this okay and now we'll be clustering our data using the k-means algorithm right but first of all what we'll do is we'll scale our data so that both the columns will have a similar distribution right distribution which is unique for that column but same for but similar for each other right so for that what I'll be doing is I'll be using the pre-processing module from the scikit-learn so from sklearn I'll import wait I'll import the pre-processing module right and then data scaled let's name it as data scaled equals to data dot copy we'll copy the existing data and then what we'll do is we'll again use this data scaled we will say data scaled equals to this preprocessing dot scale our data right and let me just show you the scale data we have now so 
so so that's the scale data we have over here okay initially the data was like this and now we have our data given to us in this distribution okay you don't worry about that that we have changed our data i have already told you that this distribution will be according to the single parameter only we are not disturbing the distribution it's just that we are maintaining all these values in a given distribution rest the meaning of each value will remain the same okay and now what we have to choose is the number of cluster in k means so for choosing the number of clusters i have already told that we have to use a elbow method and now we'll understand how we can use it in a, using a python code so for that i'll do what i'll do is i'll import the k means algorithm so sk dot cluster i'll import the k means model right so now i'll be preparing a list let's say w okay now what this list will do it it will store the distances of each point within a cluster so this w means within cluster some scale okay so within cluster some scale so it's within cluster sum of scares okay now what this list means is it is the sum of scare distance between each member of cluster and the centroid so it is so that's why it is known as to within cluster sum of scare distances okay so we'll be calculating wcss for different value of clusters right and for that what we'll do is now we'll set a range so for i in range and we'll check this wcss values for eight clusters that if we choose only one cluster two cluster three clusters and up to eight clusters so one two eight okay it will be one two seven actually so one two eight and then we'll say k means equals to now we have our model k means that we have imported so k means and now we have to mention the number of clusters so which we are actually finding so number of cluster equal to i that is ranging from 1 to 7 and let the random state be 0 right and then we'll say we'll train our k means model based on the number of cluster we are choosing so k mean dot fit now we have to pass on the scale data we have sorry yeah and then what we'll do is we'll impend the sum of scale distances in the w list so we'll append that distance sorry w, w dot append and now what we have is we have k means and it has inbuilt parameter that is inertia which calculates the sum of scare distances for each cluster we have so that's the parameter and now we'll see okay it's actually n clusters okay it's a spelling mistake sorry yeah and let me just show you the w list so that's the value of sum of scare distances between these clusters right now let me just plot you for now let me just plot this values for you so that you can understand how to see the elbow graph and can find out the conclusion that yes this is the optimal number of k-mean clusters that we can choose for the k-mean model to train okay so for that what i'll do is i'll say plt dot plot now what I have to plot is I have to plot in the range uh, for each cluster number I have to plot the WCSS value that is the within cluster sum of scared values so I'll say range is 1 to 8 this is our X column and now Y will be the W list value and then I'll say plt dot 
okay plt dot uh, okay we don't need any limit so let me just set you the labels so x label that's the cluster number we we are choosing and then plt dot label oh, sorry plt dot y label and that's the uh, wcss value okay and let's see plt dot show Okay, sorry. Decreasing over here and from four, it is just uh, decreasing linearly. So it was five, six, seven. So you can see it's decreasing linearly. So that means this is our elbow point. This four is the optimal number of clusters that we can choose for this k-means algorithm. Okay. And now we'll be training our model on this uh, cluster number cluster number only. so four and now we'll say k means sorry this k mean cluster that's our model k mean cluster dot fit now we have to fit our value so the data scaled values okay here we are not taking the training and testing output because training training part testing part because we have no labels to check the performance we are working on a clustering algorithm because we we uh, we are working on a clustering algorithm because we have a unsupervised data so this is the number of clusters we have chosen we have chosen that is four clusters right and it will perform the iterations for 300 times okay and now let's say cluster data equals to data dot copy we are preparing preparing a copy cluster and then we'll say dot fit predict the data scale so the k means will tell which label it's assigning to the data we are passing on and we are appending that value of the cluster with the actual data entry in a new data named as cluster data okay so let me just show you it let me just show you it. So this entry is belonging to two, then this belonging to one, this belonging to two, and so on. So let's check the cluster labels we have. So gaming, that's the model name we have chosen. Dot labels, that's the inbuilt function we have with the k-means algorithm so, algorithm so two one two one zero right so we have four different labels because we have chosen four clusters so these are the unique clusters we have zero label one label two label and three label and i have shown you the cluster data now just uh, now let's just visualize the data and we'll see that which data is belonging to we'll see that which data is belonging to which cluster okay so for that code again we'll have to make some changes only some changes only in that We have is we have 
cluster predictions right so cluster prediction and then we have to give different colors to different clusters so for that uh, i'll choose a cmap rainbow so we have a rainbow palette for colors to given to be given to the data points of different clusters okay okay so number of clusters but if we see that we can also have two clusters cluster 1 and cluster 2 yes you can be right because we have not separated out the outliers now this is outlier this is a outlier so we can remove the outliers as well but here in this case we haven't removed the outliers and we are just working on the first some scared distance that we are extracting right so based on that this is the clusters how we group how we cluster our data using the k-means algorithm this is how the k-means algorithm work we can we can separate and if low satisfaction high loyalty then group 2 right so these are the intuitions that we make and using these intuitions we can assign offers to the customer so if a customer is if not purchasing much that is low satisfaction and low loyalty then we can assign them offers so that they get frequent they get used to our brand and also if a person is buying lot of products that is high satisfaction high loyalty then also we can provide many offers to our customers because we know that yes they know that yes they are gonna to work on large scales okay so thanks for watching this video keep following and best of luck